Hello everybody, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church. Welcome to the program, Road to Destiny. And we're gathered here today at the end of another year. 2018 is coming to a close. By the way, I hope you had a great Christmas. Hope you enjoyed everything, had, got plenty of presents, and I hope that you did stop and bless God for all that he has done for you, even in the presents that you got, the gifts that you got, the discounts you got, whatever the case may be. But we're here at the end of the year. Uh, come to another end of a, a closing of another year. And I pray that God has been a blessing in your life throughout this year. And I pray that you'll stop, pause a little bit to see what has transpired during this year. It's a great, great time at the end of the year, not just to make New Year's, uh, you know, resolutions, but it's a great time to look back because there's some things always that you want to learn from, from your past year. There's some things you need to stop and appreciate. You need to see the value of what's changed in your life and what God has done for you, where you've come from. There's some things that you don't want to take forward. So you need to really take account of those things and, and make sure I'm not carrying the wrong things forward with me into the new year. So I encourage you to take some time and celebrate uh, and think on these things and, and, and uh, just uh, have, have a great, great end to this year and beginning of the next. We're going to have service here at the church this weekend, our final Sunday service service of the year. Your cords are invited to join us. It begins at 11.30 a.m. Uh, this weekend, and you're invited to be here. Hey, I do want to tell you as well, coming up now in a couple weeks in the new year, we're getting ready for our men's conference. It's an annual thing. We didn't do one last year. Uh, actually, we did. We, do, we did one a little bit different last year, but we moved it back to this time of year, and it's going to be a, a special, special conference. We've got some great guests that are coming. It is coming together extremely well. We're excited about it, so stay tuned for more word on that coming, but it's coming up very, very quickly here, coming up in just a couple of weeks. So I hope that you will get ready to join us here for our men's conference, calling all men. It's time to come together and just have a great, great time in the Lord. Now, let me take you to this word. This is the word for you for the end of this year and to take you into next year. I want to talk about pressing. Sometimes you need to press. You need to press your way through. And so the sermon is called Pressing On, and I pray it will inspire and encourage you to get ready to get up, strap up those boots and go forward. You got to press on. God bless you. I hope that we'll see you in the new year. I hope that we'll see you here destiny real soon. Be blessed. The new year always represents an indication of a new season. Everybody say new season. Amen. New seasons bring new opportunities. New seasons bring sometimes new challenges, but new seasons enable us to go to our next level to, uh, and sometimes we get a, we get a retake at some things, some things that we tried last year that perhaps didn't work the way that we expected. Well, now it's time to try, we can try it again and we can do things a little bit differently. So thank God for new seasons. New seasons are, are opportunities, are, are new opportunities. Sometimes to start over, sometimes to try it again, sometimes to get right things that perhaps didn't go quite the way that, 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 that we thought they should last time. And new seasons require transitions. Transitions are when we move from the current location or current situation into another or into the next. You have to transition from where you've been into where you're going. And, and a lot of times we don't really care for transition. We don't care for, for, for this concept of, of moving because we, we do, sometimes we're, we're just creatures of habit and we like that. Amen. Sometimes we like having the same routine because it gets comfortable to us. At least we know, you know, it gives you a sense of comfort knowing you get up at the same time and you do the same thing. And this is where it needs to be. And then you move on to the next thing. That sequential, that sequentiality gives us a sense of comfort in the normalcy of it all. But in order for you to go where God wants you to go next, you've got to be willing to transition. And transition oftentimes means letting go of some of the things around you that are your normal, that are your comfort. Mm. You can't move out of one house into a new house without first having to disrupt things in the old house. Anybody know what I'm talking about? 
If you've had to move, sometimes you know that there was some disruption that took place in that old house. You start pulling things out of places that they've been for a long time. And then you pack them up and, and then you have to move them. And, and so the old house doesn't look the way it used to look by the time you leave it. Amen. It's been disrupted. You had to disrupt the old in order to, to make the move into the new. And so sometimes it has to there has to be enough motivation in it for you uh, to in order to get you to make that move. Some people don't want to make that move. I talked to my father many times, many years. He's in a almost a three story house. And I told him, I said, you know, 83 years old, you know, you don't really need this three story house. You know, I get a little worried about him walking up and down those stairs now. Sometimes when I see him, I said you could you could take this house, which you fully own and has made so much money over these years. You could take this house, sell it. And you could get yourself a high end ranch, one level place with all the bells and whistles you want. Guess what he said? Ain't moving. Ain't moving. Why? Too much disruption. You don't want to leave what's comfort, even when what you could have can be better than what you're dealing with right now. But you need to understand that the only way, come on, somebody say only way. The only way to move to your next level is going to take transition. You're going to have to be willing to let go of some things to go forward. Different people respond to change in different ways. There are some people who, you know, just jump at it. You know, hey, let's do it. Somebody says something new. Let's go to a new place. Let's do something. Fine, I'm in. Let's do it. They're the first ones in the car. They're the first ones on the bandwagon. They're ready to go. Some of us are that way. Some people will only move once everything in the plan is perfectly in order. I'll do it, but before I'm going, this has got to be lined up just right. That's got to be done. Every I has to be dotted, every T. I'll do it, but only if the way is completely open and clear and everything is fully understood. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Then there are some people who just avoid transition altogether. They're just not, no. You mention it, you talk, no, they go in the other direction. They're getting out, they're changing the subject. They don't even want to talk about it because transition just, just, oh, just thinking about it gets you shivering and gets you, you know, uncomfortable. There, different people respond to transition in different ways, but transitions are necessary uh, for us to go where we need to go. I want you to understand this right now. Some of you need to get it in your head right now. Right now, you're not going to see greater things the same way. Amen. Come on, let that like break it in right now. You're not going to see higher level things happening by doing things the same way that you've been doing them. Think about it. You've been doing it over and over and over again. And what have you gotten? The same response, doing things the same way. If you truly want to get to the next level, you're going to have to motivate yourself to let go. Somebody say, let go. Let go of what you've been holding on to that's been, even though it's been making you comfortable, so that you can go to the next place that God would have you to go to. I'm always reminded of the story in the book of the 23rd Psalms. Everybody knows the 23rd Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And many times we think of the individual verses, but there's a story there. There's a picture there that he portrays, which is very powerful because he describes, amen, these, these sheep it, it being in a place of comfort, being in a place where everything is provided. And that's where we all like to be, right? Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside these wonderful still waters. It's just beautiful. Thank God for keeping me and blessing me. Thank God for all the blessings in my life. But then it gets, it shifts. The, the picture shifts and all of a sudden you get, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Where did that come from? I thought we were by, by you know, green streams and blue streams and, and, and the wonderful green grass. And all of a sudden now a picture comes up, amen, where my, my beautiful green has has been shattered and I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. Somebody say, what happened, God? <laughs> Amen. We, what, what happened? Why, how did I end up here? I thought, I thought you were guiding me. I thought you were keeping me. Amen. But on the other side of that picture, that's where he says, first of all, he says, thy rod and thy staff, it comforts me. And then he says, thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my, mine enemies. You anointed my head with oil. In order to get there, though, they had to first go through the valley of the shadow of death. I want you to understand that picture is a picture of your transition. That's right. 
And it's a picture of God guiding you through your transition. Because you see, what happened is as innocent sheep, we were loving it where we were. How many of y'all were just loving it where you, yeah, everything was, you had money, you had things, you had stuff, you had things that seemed like, amen, that satisfied you. And it was all good until all of a sudden you decided to follow God. And God said, come on. And all of a sudden those things seemed to go away and you found yourself in the valley. Come on, somebody. What the sheep don't understand, and this is the nature of sheep, is that if you put sheep in any specific field, sheep will eat all the green in the field until everything is gone. That's why some people didn't like sheep herders. They didn't like sheep in their fields because sheep don't just eat the grass. They eat it all the way down to the roots. By the time the sheep get done eating, there's nothing left. So that green pasture that looked so beautiful to them was actually a dying pasture because they were consuming everything that was in it. And if they stayed in that pasture, sooner or later they were going to die out because because the food, the supply that was there for them was not going to last forever. But they didn't realize that, but the shepherd realized that. Come on, are y'all with me today? In other words, if the shepherd did not lead them out of that pasture to another pasture, where they were at, that they felt so comfortable and good about, sooner or later they would have died in that place. Come on, some of y'all need to hear this. Because if you stay where you are too long in that same comfort zone, in that same comfortable rut, in that same sequence, it's only a matter of time before you die in the midst of your comfortable place. Come on, somebody ought to help me today. That means sooner or later you got to move. Tell somebody sooner or later you got to move. Come on, shake them up. Sooner or later you got to move from where you are. You've got to get to another place and God has to take you there. But aren't you glad that the Bible says, though he leadeth me through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. In other words, whatever transition you go through, it might look rough for a moment, but always understand that God is still with you. Amen. I'm leaving some things behind and it seems a little rough sometimes because I don't have the resources I used to have and I can't rely on what I used to be able to rely on and I, maybe I can't hustle like I used to hustle but one thing I know is no matter how dark it gets God is still with me. Come on somebody praise God if you know he's still with you through it all. Hallelujah. You have to transition through. You have to transition from where you are uh, to where you are going. It's a necessary part of what you have to go through to get to where God is trying to take you. Transition carries all kind of issues for us. How many of y'all know about transition issues? Amen. amen. Fears of the unknown. But if I leave here, amen, I don't know exactly what's going to happen on the other side. I don't know if it's going to be good. I don't know whether it's going to be bad. There may be some problems on the other side. We get afraid of what might or might not happen. Amen. We have troubles dealing with what have things that we have not experienced yet. We, we don't know about this. And so we get a little bit uncomfortable about it because I don't know. Uh, I, I, don't, I haven't experienced that yet. And so I'm afraid. We get fearful about what could go wrong. And Anybody think about transition and the first thing you think about is all the things that could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Amen. I'm going to no get another car. And the first thing I think about is well, what happens if this car dies too? Amen. It will, you know, we, I don't know everything about this. I don't know who owned it. I don't know how many times they changed the oil. I don't know how they treated it. Amen. We just get afraid. Amen. You buying somebody else's house. I don't know what happened in this house. I need to bring somebody in and pray for this house because I don't know what was happening. Amen. In here before I got here. Amen. We, we get sometimes you are more afraid of what you're entering into than excited about what you're going to receive. Are y'all with me? We have fears of losing. Here it is, control. When I go through the transition, I know I'm no longer in control. Amen. I have to turn it over to God to take me through areas that I don't know anything about. When he leads me through the valley, amen, it's no longer me that's making my decisions. God is leading me now. I've got to trust him because I'm not familiar with this field that God's taking me through. So we fear losing control. We do many times everything we can to avoid change. Even when what we're standing in already is uncomfortable. You may be in the most uncomfortable aspect of your life. It's never been this uncomfortable before, but yet I still don't want to change. 
<laughs> still don't want to no, no, I just better hang out here uh, a little bit longer. Hey, Amen. You are you are about to burn up. You are about to melt. Everything around you is collapsing on you like those 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 sheep in the field. All the grass is growing. It's getting darker and dimmer. But no, I'm just going to stay here because this has always provided for me. You are dying here where you are, but yet you are afraid to move forward. Amen. From where you've been, even when it's uncomfortable, there have been people, amen, in relationships that are terrible for them. Tearing them down, building. Somebody's telling you you're no good. Somebody is depressing you and putting you down and pushing you down. And yet you still stay right in the midst of that uncomfortable place rather than going forward where God can give you some breakthrough and relief. Amen. Come on, y'all. Y'all still with me today? Amen. Because we're afraid of the change involved. Amen. We're leaping out and being on our own or having to do our own thing or having to be responsible for ourselves or going places that we don't know or taking on new jobs. How many people you know that will not get a new job because they will not leave what they've already got? Even though what you've got is abusing you and taking advantage of you and not paying you enough and you're not work, you're not you're not being treated like you should be treated. But here you sit and stay. Amen. Instead of going to see where God is going to take you. Come on, somebody. Y'all can get quiet if you want. I know I'm telling the truth. Amen. People avoid change. Where you've been carries a sense of familiarity. Whether it's good or whether it's bad, at least it's familiar. And so we have a tendency of sticking into this place just because it's familiar to us. It may be slapping you upside the head. It may be telling you amen and pushing you down and even depressing you. But you'll stay in that depression rather than step out to something, amen, that's new and could be even better for you. Insecurity makes a breeding ground for fear and doubt. And depression, it's stifling to you. You can't go anywhere because of where you are. And so you're in a place where you are stuck and you can't do any better. And guess what? It's not going to get any better. But here you still sit because you're afraid of change. Come on, somebody. Amen. Listen, I want to encourage you today. Do not be afraid. Do not allow fear to hold you where you are. Fear is one of those things that will cause you to quit, cause you to give up, cause you to not go any further. But understand this, fear and faith do not mix. You cannot live in faith while living in fear. In order to live by faith, you're going to have to let go of fear. The Bible says the just live by faith. If you're going to live by faith, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. If you're going to live by faith, you've got to let go of fear. Come on, somebody. Let go of fear. Come on, shout it out. Let go of Amen. Y'all trying to sleep on me today. Come on. We've got to let go of the things that have been holding us back if we want to go where God would have us to be. How many of you are ready to live by faith? Amen. Shared last week, the Bible told us in Hebrews about the word mixed with faith. Some of us have the word, but we have no faith. Amen. We believe. Yeah, God said that. God said he'll be with you. He'll said he'll never leave you. God said he's your comforter. Yes, he's my shepherd. But amen. If you can't just have the word. The word has to be mixed with faith. You've got to believe what God is saying in your life. You've got to believe when he says, I am the head. You are the head and not the tail. You've got to believe when he says you are sons of God. You need to understand that you are more than what your situation may be telling you right now. And until the word that you receive is mixed with faith, fear will keep you right where you are. But you've got to go forward. You've got to go forward. You must go forward. You have to have a mindset to go forward. You can only stay in one place for so long before you become stagnant with where you've been. You've got to move forward. Time will come when the grass, amen, will wither. Water can only remain uh, fresh if it is moving. Moving water is fresh water. Still water ultimately will become dirty. It will become rotten. It will become spoiled. It's only rivers. It's living, moving water that remains fresh. So you've got to keep, amen, moving where God is taking you. You heard me say many times that anything that is not growing is dying. Tell somebody you can't stay where you are. 
even though where you are has been comfortable for a long time. Sooner or later, that comfort level goes, up, goes away. Amen. It seems in most cases, most children, as they grow up in their family's house, amen, it's all right for a period of time. But after a while, guess what? That becomes stagnant. It's time to move on because you can't stay in the nest forever. Sooner or later, you've got to grow up and you've got to do your own thing. Come on, somebody. I want to turn your attention to the book of Philippians chapter three. I'm going to deal with it more tonight, but I want you to keep this verse in mind. And we're going to talk about it tonight. Philippians chapter three, verses 13 and 14. I want to talk about this whole book tonight. But this verse, amen, is the verse upon which we are building, amen, the balance of this entire month. The word of God is here, amen, to encourage us for the whole month what we need to do to prepare ourselves for transition. In Philippians 3 and 13, it says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. These are the things that, that this is what we need to put our heart and mind into for 2018. The word here speaks to us. The first thing that we've got to do, first thing we're going to deal with is we got to hear from God. Amen. And this is on your, your bulletin as well. You've got to hear from God. We need God to speak to us. Amen. And then once God speaks to us, the Bible says, forgetting those things that are behind. There's some things you got to let go of. Forgetting those things that are behind and then reaching forth to those things are, that are ahead. You have to make a plan for the future. I press towards the mark. Third thing you've got, to, fourth thing you've got to do is take a step. So we have to hear from God, number one. Number two, we have to let go of some things in the past. Number three, we have to make a plan for where we're going. And then number four, we're going to have to take a step. This is what you need to concentrate on this year. I believe that God will give you, amen, this in your life, the ability this month to make a plan for 2018 as to where God is taking you and then take a step. Everybody say, take a step. Take a step. You have to move forward. You have to go forward. You have to go, amen, to another place, to another direction, amen. And you cannot allow fear to cause you to stay where you are. You've got to move forward. The Bible in the book of Luke chapter 17, Jesus tells them in verse 32, he says, remember Lot's wife. He reminds them, and what is it about Lot's wife that we remember? Jesus was talking to them about the transition of the end times, what was going to happen when they had the transition for the end times. He said things are going to happen, and when you see these signs, listen, you cannot just continue to do the same things. You've got to respond to the signs, he told them. You've got to run to the housetop. You've got to get ready to do to, for something different happening. When things begin, when signs begin to show up, you've got to prepare yourself for transition. The issue with Lot's wife is that she hesitated. She had the word, but it wasn't mixed with faith. She didn't understand fully and she didn't align fully with the word. And so when the word came, you got to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah because it's about to go down here. I'm going to destroy everybody. The angel said, don't look back when you leave. But yet in Lot's wife, there was a hesitation because of the things, amen, that were still in her. Listen, even though she knew, I told you, you can be in situations which are bad for you, still hanging on to them. Even though she knew Sodom and Gomorrah were sinful. Even though she knew that things there weren't right, there was still something in her heart that wanted to hang on to it. There were friends and acquaintances that she had made there. We don't know exactly how long that she had been. They had been living there, but there were people that she was still attached to. Sometimes you are attached to things in your past and you don't want to let them go. And it causes you, amen, to still have a yearning for where you're leaving. You know you need to go forward, but you're still holding on to things from your past. There were things, amen, that were that they, even though the friends may not have been that good to them, at least they were familiar. Because the friends that they had in Sodom and Gomorrah were not necessarily good friends. <laughs> Amen. But yet they were familiar to them. Sometimes just because it's familiar, we want to hang on to it. 
And she turned to see, you know, leaving that, that city uh, and going out, you know, before they came to the city. They lived out in the fields. They lived out in the valleys. They were wandering herds people with Abraham. And they had lived in the city for a while. And now they were going to go back to wandering. She didn't want to go back to wandering. Why? Because when they wandered in the fields, they had to have faith. They had to trust God to supply for them everything they needed. Something about the city, anything you need is already in the city. Seems like no matter what the provision is, you can find it in the city. That's why many of us move to the cities. We talk about New York, anything you want to do, good and bad, you can find it in the city. Amen. You will just want got to look to the right place and it's there in the city. She didn't want to go back to wandering. She didn't want to go back to trusting God to take her to supply everything she wanted. There was some familiarity, some good about being in the city and she didn't want to let it go. So as they got ready to leave that place that was comfortable to her because faith hadn't mixed in where she was going. She turned, and when she turned around, the Bible said she became a pillar of salt. She was locked in permanently to that which she should have been able to get away of. You need to understand that if you stay too long where you are, you'll get locked in permanently, and you'll never be able to leave it. 